so tonight's film was uh, Liz W. Garcia's The Lifeguard, which uh, was released in 2013. She wrote and directed it and produced it. Um, and it stars Kristen Bell. Um, and it's sort of, it's um, one of those, um, what I like to call post-college life crisis movies. So... I got at one point I was gonna write a book about post college life crisis movies. I have a whole list. They're they're great. Um, I love them. So she's working for the Associated Press in New York, but her stories aren't being taken seriously, and she is apparently having an affair with her soon to be married boss. Uh, and you get all that in like three minutes, and then she realizes that her life is awful and that she hates it, and so she just says fuck it and moves back in with her parents in Connecticut. Just, like, without saying, like, quitting or anything. Um, and then takes a job as the lifeguard, which, at a, at a pool in the town where she grew up, which is what was her job in high school. And then she hangs out with her high school friends, played by Mammy Gummer, who is, um, I'm make sure I'm saying her last name right, Gummer? Yeah, Gummer, who is Meryl Streep's daughter. And then, uh, Martin Starr, who is from Adventureland, and he's amazing. Uh, I know he's from other things, Freaks and Geeks, whatever. Adventureland. I love that movie. Um, and her mom is played by Amy Mad Madigan, who's fantastic. And apparently married to Ed Harris. I didn't know that. Um, and so as a lifeguard, she starts... So she starts with her friends, and her friends are relatively, um, stable people, especially Mammy, who, um is trying to have a baby and is like the vice principal at the high school where they all went. But they're, they start to start, you know, hang out at the 7-Eleven and like drink and, and smoke pot and things like they did in high school. Um, much to Mammy Gumner's husband's chagrin. But they all, she also starts hanging out with, um, the teenage son of, um, the handyman guy at the place where she works. And that, and his friends, and they're like skater punks who are very angsty and are not having a good time in high school and are not having a good time in their town, and they just hate it and they want to move to Vermont. Um, and then more things happen. I'm, I'm not going to go any further into the plot because I don't want to spoil anything. Although, I'm about to spoil a major thing, so if you don't want to be spoiled, stop watching. So, the movie's... I, I can get some of the angst, especially with her and her parents, because I, too, moved home with my parents when I was, uh, it was part of why I like post-college life crisis movies, is I lived in the back of my parents' house for two years, and there is some angst that can arise from an, a young, an adult child living with her parents. Angst can happen. Um, and I wish they had focused on that a little more, because there was not enough scenes where they really went went there and they could have but maybe you know she's never the woman who wrote it maybe she's never actually experienced what that's like I don't know uh, I know I have um but so where the movie sort of lost me a little bit is when she starts um she starts having an affair with the with the teenager and he's like 16 and she's 29 um almost 30 and there's not real repercussions to it and at the end the, his father finds out but he doesn't care and it's just sort of a slippery slope when you're talking about statutory rape because like even the, the the kid says it's not like she was raping me but it's like legally she was and she knew she was and she shouldn't have been doing it and yet nobody got in trouble and nobody learned a lesson and I guess that's more how real life, like, this shit happens and, you know, people move on all the time. So maybe it's because I'm a naive person who wants moralized lessons and everything. I don't know. Um, <laughs> um, it just was a little flippant on the subject. Um, there's one other thing I was going to mention. Oh, but that said, um, I did enjoy the film because it included, one, a dick shot, two... And, like, held on it for a while, too. Two, um, oral sex on a woman. Always good. And three, um, shit, oh, uh, men crying. I love, I love men crying in movies. So it had three of my favorite things. 
Um, but I can't, I can't 100% say it's a great movie. It's not even particularly a good movie. None of the characters are all that likable. Um, I can relate a little bit to the Kristen Bell character because I did drop out of grad school at one point and uh, move into the back of my parents' house. So, because I, I knew I was in the wrong place and I was doing the wrong things and I didn't know what else to do. Um, and I was lucky enough to have parents who would let me live in the back of their house. So that I could relate to. And I, you know, not everyone can relate to that because not everyone's been through that or had the luxury of being able to go through that. Um, but all the other characters, save the Mammy Gummer character. I liked her. We needed more time with her. She's a great actress. Um, and she has all these freckles and I just love freckled faces. Um, I wonder if Meryl Streep has all those freckles too. Or if she got that from her dad. I don't know. Um... I just wish the characters were a little more likable, or at least relatable, if not likable. Like you can straddle that line, but it doesn't quite. Not that I to say I hated the movie. I didn't hate the movie. It's not a terrible movie. It's just sort of like one of those middle of the line. All right, this was it was a movie kind of movies. Um, yeah, but uh. Kristen Bell is a is a very likable actress, so she does her best with this character. Uh, it's on Netflix, so if you're interested, you can watch it, have your own opinions. Um, so yes, it was 2013's *The Lifeguard*, written and directed by Liz W. Garcia, and starring Kristen Bell.